Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 27 of this NHL 21 No Cap Draft to Glory franchise mode here with the Kelowna Comets. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, go up into that top corner of the video right now. And if you do enjoy this video, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit that notification bell to never miss when these uploads come up. And next thing up, guys, make sure that you leave comments on this video because last episode we literally had no comments and well it doesn't really help this move along but we are at a bit of a weird stage where it's like okay more playoffs are coming up this episode and that's kind of it so i mean there really wasn't a need for a ton of comments last episode but we were able to get through i believe it was just round one of the playoffs i might be wrong there but i believe we we're just able to beat out... Oh, I can't even remember who it was. It's been so long. It's been almost a week. Ah, yes. The Calgary Flames. Yes, we beat out the Calgary Flames in... What, just six games? Six games. Okay, yeah. So they uh, they provided a little bit of a struggle there. But nothing too terrible. So, I mean, hey, you look at our goaltending here. Um, we got Cameron Dika coming up. I think he might be getting a backup role this upcoming season after how he's played. And, well, you know, we got some depth players in here. We got some guys, apart from the defense. The defense has kind of eh, been below average, to be completely honest. But, um, you know, overall, we got some guys here that, you know, have trade value, that we have options to move around and try to turn into better players and um well honestly we won't really need to focus on that just yet um how's the ahl team doing actually are they in the playoffs still i think burnaby's still in oh yeah they totally are so i shouldn't be messing with the lineup too much but um burnaby's doing well down in the minors right now that's what we like to see and if they can win you know hopefully um we'll see some you know stat growth there but this team is really just set up to do well here in the playoffs and of course the presence trophy winners first place with an absolutely insane record um i would expect nothing less than a conference finals if not stanley cup finals appearance from this team especially since we are defending stanley cup and president's trophy champs at this point and i mean i have moved Hartikainen up to play with Kasparaitis just because um, he is producing way more points than a lot of other guys here. So that's why Colburn and Latowski are also going together. Um, we could even do it like that with two plus fives, but it really doesn't make much of a difference for chemistry spread, honestly. So, so yeah, um, we are just going with you know a crazy top pairing to make sure that they are you know battling out against Vancouver's top line because. If you watched last episode, again, go back and watch it if you didn't. Um, if you watched last episode, Vancouver's team is really pretty well a one-line team. I mean, yes, Colton Anthony, Nicholas, and McBride. Yeah, they got some players down there. Ronald, oh, Ronald, Ronald Stamkos, Ronald Stamkos. Um, but yeah, like Lafreniere is their only really threatening player, in my opinion, apart from, of course, Quincy Torres, who could just steal the show here. But let's get into round two of the playoffs. Um, I'm excited to see what happens, and of course we got Burnaby going as well here against, by the looks of it, it's going to be Cleveland in round two. So, let's start at simming. I'm hoping to get through a lot, but who knows, if we start losing like crazy, then obviously I'll jump in and play. But here we go, game one of the AHL and NHL round two of the playoffs, and we see a 5-3 win for the Comets as Weston Zajac puts up a significant amount of points. He's at 15 points in just seven games. Um, and a 3-2 loss for the Bolts in round two, game one. So that one kind of stings for Burnaby anyways. Um, I would love to see both teams, you know, make it to at least the finals, hopefully. But who knows? Um, round two, game two, Shostrom goes out. And a 5-4 win for the Comets as things are going well in Kelowna. But they're not going so well in Burnaby, unfortunately. So... I mean, that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, we seem to be walking all over Vancouver at this point with Kelowna. And, yeah, another 5-3 win. And, oh, man. Man, you guys have dug yourselves a hole here. Um, seriously, Burnaby, how did you 
how do you tank that hard against a team like Cleveland? Like, what? There is nothing special. Oh, Henrik Whiting. That could do it. If Whiting's just... Yeah, he literally hasn't lost a game yet. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so beat the goalie and you beat the team. That's literally how this should work, but... I guess not. I mean, I guess our guys just cannot put a puck in the net in Burnaby, but that's that's Burnaby. I'm not really concerned about that as much, especially since we got the 3-0 lead here against Vancouver. And really, I would expect us to finish off the Canucks here in, um, in this last game. But honestly, I want to see if Burnaby can even survive or if they're even going to get a goal. And they get two. Okay, so that's a good start. Ekblad shorthanded and then Hedekin. Second period, 3-2 game, and they win it 4-3. Uriel Bentley playing a huge role, and they do survive for another game. Cameron Dika bumps up for ice time. That's what we like to see. And, of course, we've got this Vancouver game coming up here. So let's see what the Comets can do if they can pull off the sweep or if the Canucks are going to come back. So first period, 2-2, two two, as Mikas and Lampman score for Kelowna, McBride and Kudobin for the Canucks. 16-8 on shots. That's a huge difference. Second period, 3-2 to two game. Mikas, you know, gives us the lead there. 22-19, Vancouver bounced right back on shots. Uh, but let's see what the third period contains as uh, we're Simmon on 8 speed. And power play for the Canucks doesn't go. Power play for the Comets doesn't go. Oh my goodness. This is, uh, is going to be a tight one. And Vancouver ties it up. Quinn Hughes, it, old Quinn Hughes ties it up. Then Mary Mikas gives Kelowna the lead. Power play for Kelowna after. They don't score, but Brady Kachuk scores, ties it up for Vancouver. And, oh my goodness gracious, what is even going on here? And, <laughs> oh, Horikawa, Horikawa doubles up in one shift and finishes off the Canucks single-handedly in the sweep. Matty Horikawa, I thought for sure we were going to overtime. And all of a sudden, Horikawa just pulls two goals in the span of 11 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, Vancouver fans. That one's got a sting, but um, then again, we really don't have that many Vancouver fans on the channel. Marion Mikas, my guy, puts up a hat trick in the game deciding, or series deciding game, sorry, and uh, we do pull off the sweep. The only other team to do that is the Canadians against Shikutami. All right, Montreal, hello. Um, that was, you know, for another team to pull off a second round sweep, that takes some skill. And I totally just went right past Montreal. There they are. Oh yeah. Yep. This uh, this Canadian team, Canadians team, could definitely pull off some sweeps if they uh, if they do it right. But then again, they have some randos in here that just make no sense as well. So yeah, I don't know exactly how to judge this team either. They. Um, Francois St. Louis, um, interesting goalie, honestly, um, and yeah, I just, I don't know exactly what to think of this team, obviously, their, yeah, their team, their first line is just ridiculous, it's a 2-3-4 line, and it's pretty darn scary, but that's, that's the team that pulled off another sweep, apart from our team, obviously, and when you look at the comments, it's like, oh yeah, that's what no salary cap does, so, anyways, um, Kelowna does pull the sweep, that's beautiful, but let's see if Burnaby can survive. Just before we actually jump into the Burnaby series, fun fact for you guys, that is the only series the comments have ever swept, apart from their first ever cup deciding series against the Toronto Maple Leafs back in 2031 slash 32 so you can go back and watch that episode at some point if you haven't seen it it was a uh, pretty good series there that we played against toronto but that was also just crazy against uh, vancouver so let's start advancing here see what happens are they going to survive i really don't think they are honestly 5-3 win i i just i should just keep talking i guess because you never know um this this could go either way. I don't think Kelowna survives six, and they do. Oh my goodness, they're not Kelowna, uh, Burnaby, but Burnaby has survived up to this point. All right, Burnaby's still alive. Interesting. All right, game one of or game one, game seven of round two. 
2 1 start for Cleveland. 9 to 7 on shots. Burnaby not off to a spectacular start. Second period, 2 2. Man, you know what? I'm not going to get a whole lot of opportunities to even touch the AHL team, but this is also one of the best AHL rosters I think we've ever had and that I may ever honestly get to play with. So um, let's show off the Burnaby jerseys a little bit. Did you see those stats? We have an 84 offense in the minors. What is going on here? An 84 offense in the minors is insane. The Bolts should honestly be walking all over Cleveland. Watch me get scored on 10 times. I wouldn't even be surprised. All right, so I would love to keep Burnaby alive here, but honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. So Hedekin taking the face off and Pavlicek going to win it. Ekblad up to Scoville. Harry Scoville cuts back. Bad kick pass. That's not spectacular. Oh, big hit there. Oh, here we go. Scoville. Scoville. Big setup. Oh, you missed it. You missed it, Niedermeyer. The only thing with our first line is they're pretty small overall. But Niedermeyer's high skilled for sure. Scoville's not bad actually. He's pretty he's a pretty decent player. But over to Pavlicek. Oh what a tip! Niedermeyer, that's gotta be a goal. That's a good goal all day, man. Actually, I don't know. Does Biden get the stop there? Does Niedermeyer make that tip happen? I could not tell. I genuinely could not tell. Oh, fuck. It's high. It's high. Yeah, I'm watching the replay now. That's not a goal. Yeah, didn't think so. Too bad. <sighs> Sorry, Niedermeyer. I thought for sure we got one there. Somehow still a 2-2 game. Um, and faceoff's going to go back. Pavlicek over to Ekblad. Shot through traffic. Amazing save. And yeah, I don't know how that one stayed out, honestly. Okay, that's cool. Alright, yeah, pass the puck right behind our own net. Schroeder up to Higgins. Higgins right up the middle. Jeffrey Higgins, there it is. Ariel Bentley scores. I made it with a little too easy as well. Which I mean, fair enough. Cleveland is really not the greatest team. They have one of our old players that will kill, I'm pretty sure. But, um, yeah, Bentley makes his presence known as an 83 overall player. Um, that one should be in the net most times. But, uh, looks like the Bolts could be moving on. There's still four minutes left. I might choke it. Honestly, I seriously might, but let's see what we can do. I can't believe that we actually pulled this off. Like, this team may have actually won four in a row. Well, I won the draw, so that's a good start. Somehow, but I, I, don't, I don't know how the bolts are just meant to go farther here, I guess. So they somehow move on, but honestly, that does not make sense. They were down by so many games. And they come back and win three in a row. Four in a row, sorry. Craziness, man. Just sheer craziness. Who's the final star? I would say probably, um, probably Bentley. Unless Dika stood on his head. And the first star is indeed Ariel Bentley. Goal and an assist game winner as well. Wow, okay. So that was something special as uh, Burnaby comes back and literally wins four in a row. So didn't expect that, but that's how it goes sometimes. And uh, yeah, Burnaby will be moving on to the second, third round as well. Um, Higgins has got 10 goals now, but that was just sheer craziness, honestly, that they 
could not. Cleveland just could not finish it off, man. <laughs> you got to feel bad for their goalie. Wins seven in a row and then immediately loses four in a row after. So, I mean, by the looks of it, we got Winnipeg, Montreal, and either Ottawa or Windsor. I would bet on Windsor this time, honestly. I kind of get that feeling. So, who's it going to be? And we are going to see, obviously, Winnipeg. No question there. Ottawa makes it through. All right, so let's go check out our remaining three teams. Obviously, I just showed you guys the um, Calgary or Calgary Montreal Canadiens, um, but we have the Ottawa Senators, who again have a franchise player in Charpentier. Uh, they got Tricidal on this team, so he could potentially win a cup. Um, Capriva's decent. Tapper's a very good player. Formentin's old, but somehow still killing it. Um, Yuka Vinanen, not bad by any means. Georges is a good player. Obviously, Sharpentje is insane. Um, and they got 34-year-old Raymond Tlusti. Still an elite. We totally could have drafted him fifth overall instead of, um, what's his name? Instead of Eric Sider, but I think Sider's panned out pretty darn well for us. Ooh, they got Catler in that. That could be an issue if they make it far. They're missing Clermont as well. Oh my goodness, man. Okay, this Ottawa team is absolutely legit. Um, what about Winnipeg? This is the other team. Well, they just beat Windsor, right? Like, that team just beat Windsor. And don't get me wrong, Windsor was a fantastic team as well. So am I surprised? No, not really. Um, I kind of was expecting Ottawa to pull that off, even though they have worse defense and Gene Cooper's just as good a goaltender. My goodness. Um, all right, so yeah, quite the team there in Windsor, but uh, Winnipeg is the actual team that we're playing against. Um, not a great defense, honestly. Offensively, Alsner's a great player. I will give you that one. Israel Alsner's insane. Declan Hughes is on this team. One of our best draft picks ever, honestly. And he only ended up playing how many seasons for us? And he's almost hit a thousand points. He played one, two, three, four, five. We traded him after nine seasons. That's so bad. That's so bad because Declan Hughes was an absolute beauty. He put up a 92-point campaign. He paid 101 last year with Winnipeg, man. Oh, Declan, what a player. What an absolute god. Oh, my gosh. Fedotank was on the third line. Okay. So this team is 100% built around their offense. Um, so if we can check their offense. Dude, LaRue is benched. Valhadi is benched. What? on earth is this team but Declan Hughes is still one of their best players they literally got four 90s uh, what such a strange team honestly this is very easily one of the best defenses in the league the 80s all the way to the bottom with the chemistry boosts are huge for this team and there's no doubt in my mind that that is what's making the difference in these series and why we're able to sweep a team that like um why we're able to sweep a team like Vancouver is because our defense just simply locks down their forwards. Um, so we'll see if the Comets can do that heading into this conference finals matchup against the Winnipeg Jets, who we have surprisingly never played against before. So let's get into this. And uh, here we go. Simulation day by day. Game one of round three. It's a 5-2 win for the Comets and a 4-2 win for the Burnaby Bolts as they beat Wilkes-Barre Scranton. All right, good start. Um, that's not what I wanted. I did not want the calendar. I wanted to just slow sim these or day sim these. So over to game number two of the conference finals, and it's a shootout loss, 6-5 loss for the Comets against the... Winnipeg Jets. That one kind of stings, honestly. And a 4-2 loss in Game 2 for the Bolts. Okay. All right, heading into Game 3 now. 
It's another loss for the Comets as they lose two to one. Or lose two to one. Lose six to three. Six goals against. Shut it down. Where is the defense, man? We have the best defense in the league. I have no doubt in my mind of that. What is going on? Like, please shut down Winnipeg. They're not that good. Apparently they are. Okay. Cool. At least Burnaby we don't have to worry about. Okay. So here we go. Down 3-1. Not where we wanted to be. At all. Um, but now we get to slow sim. So, game number five. Will the Comets be eliminated? Or will Winnipeg actually concede a game here on Kelowna's home ice? First period, 3-2 to two for Winnipeg. Of course. Of course, look at power play, power play. Man, like, give me a break. 11 apiece on shots. Zajac and Mikas get the goals in the first frame for the Comets, and I don't even care about the Winnipeg players. Alzner is the only name I even recognize, honestly. So, game game two, period two. We're down 4-3. to three. Feta Tank wins. Zaitsev have get goals each. And this has been a dead-even game overall, apart from the fact they're slightly ahead in shots. And, dude, come on. There's no defense. There's no goaltending. Their offense can't do everything. Finish them off. All right, so here we go. Um, third period, we're down a goal. We need two to win the game at least. And uh, I'm honestly just done dealing with this uh, Winnipeg team. Dude, like, this is super stuff. I can't. Winnipeg has no defense and no goaltending. So again, like, Charlie K just skated right through the middle of their team. And Cider banked it in off of the goalie. Like, <laughs> you you guys want me to prove that to you. Like, yes, that was an absolutely too easy goal. It's on Superstar. I don't know what else to say. Um, Sliders, maybe? But, like, man, that our first line just made that look so easy. Anyways, come on, Lundros. I know you're good, but you're not that good. Uh-oh. Odd man rush. That's not good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. A huge save. I love to see it. I love to see those plays. Oh, here we go. Jason K. K. Brothers. K. Brothers all day. Oh, freaking donut. I don't know what to tell you. The comments are just donut. And yet, those brothers has turned this team into one of the biggest powerhouses in the league. Apart from, of course, you know, actually upgrading our defense eventually. It took years to do. But having puck moving defensemen like Colburn and Kasparitis and even Hardikainen moves the puck so well um it makes such a big difference for this team so anyways immediately taking the lead oh and a real bad giveaway there that should have been a goal and we're going to take a penalty 21 seconds left I can't believe that they're getting calls like that not only that but like I go to line a guy up, and they just slide off of my fucking hit. It's really annoying, honestly. But now we just get to ice the puck, and it doesn't even matter. Um, pressure, boys, please. Please, get some pressure on these guys. Dude. There you go. Okay. We take game five in a third period momentum swing, as the Comets really show up in the third at home. Um, get two goals and really get outshot big time, honestly. But um, Redmond, three assists. You gotta love to see that. Bit of a dicey one, honestly. A little one goal game. And uh, I don't like where our team sits with Winnipeg. Like, yes, they have some crazy good forwards. But we have some crazy better forwards, if that makes sense. Like, we have defensemen that are the same gradient as their highest players. All right, so um, don't ask me how, but uh, the Bolts are actually up 3-2 to two now, and um, they just have to win one more, so that's cool. But, um, of course, you know, we are down 3-2 still. I don't know what the hell is going on with my clicker here, my controller, um, but Ottawa is... Uh, very well in the finals in back-to-back -back years, and I would like to meet them there again just to show them that they are not a good enough team. Um, so anyways, let's beat Winnipeg here, please. There you go. That's uh, that's a little more of a Comets appearance. So, <laughs> every third shot was in the net in the first period for the Comets. Anyways, 4 nothing. 
12 to 9 in shots. One frame of play done. Second period. <laughs> this is how it's supposed to look when Kelowna shows up with 100 offense, 91 defense, and 86 goaltending, and the Winnipeg Jets show up with 100 offense, 81 defense, and 78 goaltending as displayed. 8 1's the final score. Cool. Okay. Who is your first star and what is the. That's it? That's it. Interesting, but okay. <laughs> eight. Oh my gosh. Eight one. That's um that's a slightly more Kelowna appearance. And well, Burnaby's gonna be going to the Calder Cup finals against either Rockford or Colorado. So that's promising as well. I like where that's going. Um and Burnaby will be indeed taking on the Colorado Eagles in the Collier Cup Finals. All right, so it is now game seven, and looks like it's gonna be the Colorado Eagles. All right, let's sim up to that. Let's uh, sim this game, see how game one of the finals goes, because, I mean, even though this is probably gonna be where I wrap up the episode, man, Burnaby, what, what are you doing? Oh. 54 seconds into overtime. That's a little lame. Okay. So they lose game one. But here we go. Um, game seven. Just finish off the Jets, man. Come on. All right. Two nothing start. That's good. 12 to 8 on shots. I got a hair on my lip. Um, Casperitis and K get the goals. And second period, it's going to be uh, an absolute mopping of the floor here with the Jets. And am I surprised? No, not really. They just simply did not have it in them um, to make it that far. They really shouldn't have even gotten that far. But, you know, it is what it is. Hallis Chuck gets the one and lone goal. Um, and yeah, we just absolutely curb stomp them. Like I was kind of hoping, but um, McMuffin with a .962 save percentage. Gorgeous. All right. Um, Lampman is out with a mild concussion. All righty then. I guess that is going to have to be fixed. Yes. Um, Christensen, Ratchenik. Who are we going with? I think we have to go with Christensen for more so for the penalty killing and things like such. Um, But yeah, um, not bad at all. The team is in a very much winning position, even though Isaiah McMuffin literally has not been able to stop a freaking shot. Um, on the other hand here, our goaltender in the AHL, AHL? Yeah, AHL, has been significantly better, I believe. And yep, yep, Cameron Dika is a legitimate prospect now which you'll love to see from a second round pick and he's a big one too so yeah um all right hopefully we're not injury riddled heading in against ottawa here but um i don't know if that's where we're gonna wrap it up i think it i think it's where we should wrap it up but man you know what you know what i want to see I want to see if we can pull it off or not, if we can win the double here. Um, and not just the back-to-back, -back, because that would be quite impressive from the comments. Two seasons in a row, two presidents, two Stanley Cups, that would be something else. But it's more so if the Burnaby Bolts and the Kelowna Comets can win Calder and Stanley Cups in a single season. So let's get into this. Um, we're going to simulate up to the next game here. And obviously we will be taking on the Ottawa Senators in the playoffs, but um, we are going to be watching the uh, Burnaby Bolts quite closely here to see if they can pull it off or not. First period of, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Burnaby, wake up, boys. That's two games at home, is it not? Yeah, it is. That's two losses at home. That is atrocious. All right, um... Well, that's sad. Okay. Anyways, game one of the Stanley Cup Finals, Ottawa rematching against the Comets here um, from last year, and 
starts very much in Ottawa's favor. Uh, the Comets jump back a bit in the second period, but man, this is not looking good. Heading into the third, it's a 6-4 final. You can't let you can't let them score six goals. That's just as simple as it gets. And yes, Ottawa's good, but they're not that good. All right, um, over to game number two and three now. Can can we get a simulated win here? Like it's the Colorado Eagles. They're not that spectacular. Finally, okay. Burnaby finally wins a game, four to three. Hopefully that will rub off on the Comets too, as they absolutely stunk that. I don't want to play this game. Um, they absolutely stunk that last one out. Actually, let's see Ottawa's overalls. Okay, okay. So they're not that. They're not that different. Um, the defense is significantly worse in Ottawa, but you know, just a ten rating difference. Nothing crazy or anything. Like like that doesn't matter at all. All right, game two in Kelowna. One nothing start. Guerrero opens the scoring. Sixteen to ten. Second period. It's a two to one game as we let Charpentier, or sorry, Carpentier, right? Um, LeBanc definitely let me know that one. All right, and third period, four to one win. Guerrero and Mikis get on the board there. Thirty eight shots, my guy. Yes, Jacob Catler's a good goalie. He's not that good though. Thirty eight shots. We'll light him up, and not much of a surprise there. All right, so that was a uh, that was a bit of a good bounce back game. Only one goal against, and uh, well, let's head into game number four now. Austin Lampman is returned. Oh, you know what? You know what? I really like where this guy's looking and where he's trending. He's going to be a top top player here in absolutely no time. Um. But, you know, as good as Christensen probably was, um, I do just simply have to put an 85 rated player in over him, because it makes no sense otherwise. So yeah, um, 14, 15, 10, 22, Schroeder, holy jeez, man. 22 assists in 21 games. Never mind 26 points for Jeffrey Higgins, who is carrying this team right now. 20 and 21 for Bentley. Not bad. 14, 11, 11. Okay, so not a ton of scoring all around from this team, but uh, it is what it is. Deke is up to a 78. You love to see it. And, uh... There's a lot of growth happening right now. I like what the team is trending towards. So, anyways, game number th four now, sorry, of the Calder Cup Finals. It is a 0-0 first period. It is a 1-0 second period as Bentley gets the Comets, or the Bolts on the board, sorry. And third period, it's a 2-0 final as looks like it's going to be the home ice curse in the Calder Cup Finals anyways. And, uh, well, we did split it 1-1 with Ottawa on home ice so let's see how the away ice battle goes in the country's capital of canada ottawa first period 2-2 two, two. okay all right some big numbers for both teams um more so for the comets but i mean one of a one out of every three shots going in for isaiah mcmuffin is not exactly promising either all right second period 4-3 yep mcmuffin's just gonna be a freaking sieve today all right 31 shots three goals that's just spectacular all right and okay okay we have the opportunity to win this and it's over let's go comets win it kelvin Urkamp's just one shot in gets the goal and yeah you pepper 42 shots on net you got to expect pucks to go in so two to one lead for the comets looking real good here and well now we head back to game number five of the calder cup where this could decide the series here colorado with burnaby first period two to one game not great there from the bolts second period they bounce back um big time my goodness gracious 
what a play for them. Oh, I'm not, or what a period for them. They really showed up in that one. All right, third period, five to four win. That's tight. Oh, that's a tight win. But the Bolts take the series lead for the first time in the series after having to come back. And that's also the first home ice win that we have seen all series there. So that is very interesting. Now back to the NHL, or the CPHA, sorry, is what we're calling it, um, where we will hopefully see a good game four from the Comets in Ottawa, and a 1-1 start. Carpenche gets the Senators on the board, and then Mikas ties it up. 12-10 to Ottawa, first period. Second period, Kelowna on the board again as Rafael Guerrero gets... Rafael? I think it's Rafael Guerrero. I might be wrong. Um, gets the comments on the board again. They're getting thoroughly outshot, but third period decides it as a 3-2 victory for the Comets. Raymond Tlusti gets a goal, but uh, Charlie K ultimately gets the game winner there with just 7.45 left in the third. Ottawa plays Kelowna and doesn't win, and I think that is the confidence crusher right there for them, as really both these teams could take the championships on the same day how did ottawa make it to the final what the honest to god heck just happened here i'm sorry um ottawa you do not belong here at all Kelowna has a 136 point campaign ottawa has what like an 89 point campaign no 91 91 but dude what on earth they got 55 percent of their points and came in at 16th place nanaimo missed the playoffs because they were in our division get out of here ottawa you don't deserve to be here uh -huh. my goodness all right so can they pull it off in the same day i would love to see it happen it could be the bolts in six and the comets in five if it goes according to plan but here we go. Is this going to be it? Is the Calder Cup going to end up going to Burnaby? First period, 1-0 Colorado. Second period, 4-1, my guy. This is worth jumping in, even if I get torched, but what? What? Okay, let's just play our game with the forward group we have. They're so much better. It's not fun. I'm... Why would I want to play when they get 30 shots and 7 goals? Like, yes, I get it. It's on Superstar. But a 70 rated offense should miss the net more than they hit it. Holy fuck, dude. That was stupid. I'm sorry. I, I know I curse sometimes, but this is just like, I don't even care if Kelowna wins now. I mean, I do. But not to the extent where it's like they have to win today now. Like they're getting the cup. Oh my Kelowna. Do we even need a cup celebration at that point? When it's seven nothing, you just gotta feel bad for Ottawa. Eight nothing. Eight one. Okay, Vinanen got a goal. Oh my, Kelowna. Oh my. Yes, you lost game two, or no, game one. We lost game one. Holy jeez, man. I would say Charlie K has to be your Colin Smith winner. I mean, 17 goals, 17 assists in 22 games is insane. But we're headed to game seven here. And honestly, the focus has kind of shifted from the Comets, who, yes, the Comets are a fantastic team. They deserved everything that happened this season. But, man, the fact that it could come, not it could, it does come down to Game 7 of the Calder Cup Finals to decide if Burnaby and Kelowna both win or not is crazy. So, first period, one nothing. Ariel Bentley, 10-10 on shots. Second period, 5-1. It's guaranteed. It is guaranteed. 
Actually, it's not, because they could get four rolls in a period. I wouldn't even be surprised. How did they not score on a 5-on-3, dude? What? <laughs> Let's go. It's our season. It's our season. This team has that has been built is just absolutely amazing. I want to see the Calder Cup celebration, because that is honestly what I care about more than the Stanley Cup at this point, just because I want these teams to win together. All right, so here we go. I mean, last 59 seconds. This is literally just for the Selly, and uh, let's do it. And we are down to the last three seconds. And there you have it. The Burnaby Bolts win an AHL championship. The Calder Cup. Who is our captain? Is it Higgins? I would assume it's Higgins. As he's been there probably the longest. But I don't even know who gets to lift it first, honestly. Might be Schroeder, might be Bentley, might be... I don't know. Who's the captain? Maybe it's going to be an alternate captain lifted in, because I don't know if we even have a captain named, which is a little crazy, but that's okay. So yeah, the double is completed in a single season. The AHL and the NHL team both win the Stanley Cup, or both win the championships. I don't, I can't say that we have a captain. I honestly don't know. Not seeing any letters on there. Um, I would assume, yeah, it should be Higgins. But it might just be Ariel Bentley gets to lift it because, yeah. Oh no, it's, um, there's no captaincy. Who's number 49? It's literally the exact same as the Memorial Cup. Donahue makes sense. He's one of the highest rated players. Um, actually, no, he's not. What the heck? But yeah, Higgins deserves to lift that. He scored so many goals. Um, Niedermeyer should be in the NHL by next season. Same with a bunch of these guys, honestly. We, we almost have a full line down there in the AHL. But yeah, the Calder Cup. There you go, man. You got one alternate, number 51. That's, uh, no idea who. <laughs> but there you go. The Burnaby Bolts win the Calder Cup. Not gonna lie. Bit of a strange episode, but, uh, that's okay. That is A-OK -okay with me. So yeah, Jeffrey Higgins scores 33 points in 25 games. Um, I would assume that that is kind of the winning statistic there, um, or winning stat line for the playoff MVP. But let's advance today, and there's that beautiful screen. The Kelowna Comets and the Burnaby Bolts are your playoff champions. So that means, well, I assume progress report-wise, with that much winning, that we should see growth from certain players especially Zach Redman he had a fantastic year um, who else McMuffin probably should have done better but that's okay Hedekin's up to an 82 Litowski's an 82 Niedermeyer's an 82 Harcalabre Bentley's an 83 that's crazy man he had a pretty fantastic season in Burnaby again Our system players, Scoville, could probably make the team. Same with Grandpierre. He should totally be in the team. And same with Thibault. Wow. Yeah. Um, Ryopal could turn into something. It's possible. I believe he's a sniper. Might be wrong on that. But anyways. Um, actually, no. I, I missed the key player on the progress report here. It is this dude right here, plus 18 growth. That's huge. That is absolutely massive. And when we just go by any growth at all, Zach Marks puts up, did he put up another season? 
Wait, what do I mean another season? He put up 94 points. That's crazy. Um, Bukestad. Looking real good. Um, but Cameron Dika, Isaiah Schmalz, there's guys right there from making the jump to the NHL. Uljevic, not great, but he put up 30 points. So it's really not that bad. Timothy Nashushkin could make the team still. Um, yeah, there's some interesting ones in here. Kalanos didn't really grow that much, 60 points. Um, Bailey, okay. Bailey did all right. 16 points, but nothing crazy. And Boris definitely stepped it up. Yeah, 56 points. He could most definitely make the NHL still if he steps it up a little more. But um, let's go check out the awards as we wrap up this episode here. But back-to-back -back cups for the Comets. They win three out of the last five Stanley Cups. That's crazy. Um, last two presidents go to the Comets and, of course, Clarence Campbell's. And Ottawa has been pretty dominant over the last little bit, too. Kyle Langford wins your Art Ross and Hart. Sergey Kasparaitis wins four out of the last five Norris trophies. That's crazy. Langford wins the Lady Bing. Uh, Vorobev is your Calder winner this year. Kasparaitis. Sergey Kasparaitis with the Conn Smythe. You serious right now, man? McMuffin wins the Vesna. And the Jennings. Dang, bro. Okay. I cannot say I expected Sergey Cat. How many points did he have? Casparitis had 31. Um, but as a defenseman, when you're plus 30, 23, and have that kind of wow. Like, what a season that is from Sergei Kasparaitis, then. Jeez. That's just, just pure craziness. Man, we had so many guys over a point per game, and I mean, Redmond didn't even do bad as a rookie, either. Wow. Impressive. Just very impressive. But honestly, I personally would have pick Charlie K to be your winner there because yeah that's it is what it is man but like dang and Higgins with 33 points like he was head and shoulders above the rest of those guys what about the AHL awards okay Burnaby with the call there obviously um regular season points San Diego Bolts win the best in the east and the Goals with the West, okay. Um, the Bolts, yeah, the Bolts actually won quite a bit. Burnaby was good this year. Daryl Perry, obviously, like the best player. Korolev, yeah, yeah. Okay, where's our guy? Yeah, okay, Higgins. As he should be. Uh, most valuable Calder Cup player. And I think that's it. The Gulls literally had everybody else except for like one or two. Tucson players and yeah, an Ontario Rain player. Crazy season. Crazy. That wasn't just record breaking. That was like a one in a million season, to be completely honest with you. So, guys, I think that's where we're going to be wrapping it up for this episode. It was just amazing to see this team bond and mesh and just have that chemistry that really. It was kind of hard to predict. Like we weren't, we weren't really sure how everything was gonna play out. But man, did this team ever end up uh, end up having a good year? It was really fun to watch, and uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed because really we're gonna keep these episodes coming until we're actually uh, actually ready for uh, a series wrap up, which doesn't look like it's gonna be anytime soon, really. But uh, yeah. Man, it's, it's just been a lot of winning recently. And we still got nine seasons left before this franchise mode is technically complete. So anyways, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy this episode, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit that notification bell to never miss when these uploads come out. And of course, guys, until next time.